Welcome back. Uh, it's me, Aaron, Reptile Enterprises. As I said, we packed up the animals. We're here at Andy's house, my buddy. Um, I mentioned in my other unboxing video that I mentioned I ran out of bat or space on my phone because I'm using my phone to start. And we did unboxing. So we're going to do unboxing in front of Andy and he can discuss them a little bit more. So yeah. Ooh. And you get the crummy box because I was just driving. The oh, well, that's okay. So let's get into this. All right. We'll show everyone what I revealed before, but show. Let you do it because sure. you get to see them for the first time. Mm -hmm. The one with the blue dots, the male? Yes. Okay. So. He seems a little more rangy, but. Get him out. Yes, that's the male. So as I mentioned before, these are black milk snakes. Um, Andy, you know a little bit more about them. Yeah, I bred um, these. I bred these in the the mid 2000s, just a couple of times. They're not rare in the hobby. They're uncommon, is what I would say. Yeah. Um, but a couple things like, what's their general size at adulthood? Um, four to six feet. Right. Tend to be a little bit bigger than the average Honduran milk snake, and. Probably around a thousand to fifteen hundred grams. Some and bigger animals getting, you know, a little bit more than that. And so, they look like regular tricolor hog noses. Uh, not hog noses, although they remind me of the tricolors. They are tri look like tricolor milk snakes, and so they hatch, and then they turn jet black over time, right? That's right. It's called the ontogenic color change. And most milk snakes develop what's called black tipping, which is where black creeps into the other colors uh, with age. Um, and with the black milk snakes, it completely takes over or almost completely takes over the color. Some adults, you'll have uh, a little bit of banding remaining, especially the white banding, but uh, they're gonna be pretty close to jet black and probably a pretty good size. And do these, you, you know better than me, do they double and triple clutch like other milk snakes? They can. Um, as a breeder, I never like to see the bigger species double clutch because it tends to take a little bit more out of them than the smaller species. They don't rebound as quickly, right. but uh, there's exception to every rule and sometimes they'll just do what they want no matter what. So, but yeah, that, that's very possible. So I the female out and I can pass her to you if you want to put him away. Sure. I'll quickly show her off. Yeah. Pretty typical black milk snake attitude in that they're just a little bit jumpy and nervous. They tend to gain confidence with size, but some of them remain a little bit squirrely. I'm gonna tuck that guy back in. Yeah, trade you. Sure. Let me take a look at the female. Yeah, the female has a few more uh, aberrancies, difference in uh, the banding where the pattern is connected or just a little bit weird. That's, uh, that's almost a shame that some of those are gonna be, or most of them, if not all of them, are gonna be completely gone when it's an adult, but nothing wrong with it. Totally black snake, as far as I'm concerned. What she's gonna look like, so it's not an Eastern Indigo, and it's not, like I would call these the poor man's Indigo snakes because they're not as high as prices as indigos, but they're also not as low as Mexican black king snakes. But these guys are kind of in the middle, right in between, value-wise, and definitely closer on the just the handability side. Yeah. Um, and then the size-wise, they're right in the middle between the two of them, because the eastern indigos get very large. But as I said uh, previous in the other previous video, Andy and I did this as a joint project, so they're gonna stay at his house here, and because right. he's way more patient with this than I am. <laughs> and he's gotten a little more experience with these than I do. So we shipped them to my house, we got them here, I drove them up to his place, and I get to hang up with Buddy. And then we'll show the rest of the collection in a little bit. But let's get these guys away. We'll go from there. Yeah, they don't bite. No, they're very good. So our original audio um, didn't catch in the video for whatever reason, and I didn't realize it until I got home and was going over the footage. Uh, so we're going to do a quick voiceover of the rest of this, but ho so hopefully it still comes out. Um, so what we're going to do is look at Andy's collection going forward from here. 
We'll talk about a couple points about it. So the first animal up is a female, white-sided, het trumbauer, hypo, albino, patternless, balm exanthic. exanthic? Um, and bull snakes, they have a lot of different genetics that go together. And uh, he's got quite the powerhouse started out here. Second uh, animals that we're showing off here are a breeding pair of albino tangerine hunter and milk snakes of Andes. Um, what he does is he actually pairs them, interesting enough, uh, he pairs them all throughout the breeding season, roughly between March and July. He, until the female is gravid that he notices, or he separates for feeding purposes. Um, or, and the last option is if the male has lost interest. And then he unpairs them, puts them into their own homes for the rest of the year, and then he'll do it again. And, you know, they are cannibalistic animals, however... Uh, what's interesting is that they obviously know what they're in there for, and so they do what they gotta do. But again, they're separate for feeding to make sure no accidents happen. Um, beautiful pair of, uh, again, albino, tangerine, Honduran milk snakes, which you don't find too often in Canada. And up next is his other pair of Honduran milk snakes that are breeding now. Um, these are extreme line ghost male with a female ultralight line of hypo heck ghost so the babies from this should be uh, either hypo or ghost um, because both because the ghost in hunter and milk snakes compared to bull pythons is uh, hypo and antheristic or exanthic I guess um, and so both of them are carrying hypo on both sides because the ghost is the hypo anery showing and the hypo head ghost has it in there. So the, everything will be hypo and you should have 50% of the head of them should be ghost. We're switching back to the bull snakes here. This is Andy's female Habino white sided. So, uh, Habino obviously is pretty straightforward. It's hypo albino and white sided, which all three are recessive traits inside the bull snake um, species. Uh, and Andy's specific line of hypo is Trumbauer. And again, we use a hook briefly to touch the snakes because bull snakes tend to be pretty. Um, food motivated so a little touch it'll get them knocked right out of that and they're quite easy to handle once they're out bull snakes tend to be we can't we, obviously because we lost the audio um, some of them were hissing a little bit to start but they are massive bluffers of uh, species of snake
So here we have a straightforward female hypino, again, hypo albino, the trombar line of uh, hypo. The reason this one happens to be on paper towel is, as I said, these are food motivated species of snakes. Um, so this one gave itself a self-induced wound from biting itself, um, food motivated type of thing. And so Andy puts it on paper to reduce risk of infection. It doesn't harm the snake in any way. Then he puts it back on substrate once it's healthy and, and better. Um, as you can see, that is, uh, it's great. They're very bright, um, very vibrant species. If you, if you like large colubrids that like to bluff and tend to come in a lot of different colorations, bull snakes may be, may be something you want to get into. So up next is one of Andy's prized possessions of his bull snake uh, collection. It's a female ghost, head albino, patternless, white sided. So again, in bull snakes, everything seems to, is recessive as far as we're aware, as far as I'm aware. Um, so we have a visual ghost, so exanthic and hypo, and she's head albino, patternless, and white sided. Um, and once again, his hypo is Trumbauer, and his exanthic light line is Balum. So there's different kinds in there. Uh, I won't try to name them and get them all right because as a bull python guy, I'll probably get it wrong and I don't want to disrespect that community in any way. Um, but it's a beautiful snake. She's quite large uh, and she should be breeding this year. Um, if not, she might already have babies by the time this video gets released. So once again, Andy uses a hook just to get out. You can see how food motivated this one is. His head's right there waiting for the rat to pop in or whatever, maybe a finger if you can. Um, but this is the male that will go with the previous female. And this male is a hybino white sided patternless head exanthic. So he's showing the hypo, the albino, the white side and the patternless. It's kind of like a snow bull snake or, or a blizzard almost. Um, and then add in the head exanthic in with the female, with the exanthic from the visual female. Um, and that's what you'll get. You'll get something like this. You get a five gene animal visual, probably be pretty much an all white snake. I think, uh, that's my guess, um, which, you know, if you're into bell, like ball bites and stuff, uh, all white bull snake would be pretty cool too. So this one, I believe, is actually uh, 
the daughter of his last snake will show you of his matriarch. Um, this is 100% head hypo white sided bull snake. So you can see the normal colorations of what a bull snake comes from in the wild that you find in actually Alberta, Canada, um, and find in various parts of uh, North America and the United States. Um, they get a very nice size. They actually have keeled scales, so it's a little neat. And they tend to rattle their tails and do a lot of hissing, open mouth hissing to scare people off. Um, and that's mostly what they do. They very rarely strike and very rarely bite, but uh, it does happen from time to time. But then we'll show you Andy's matriarch, and there's a little story behind that one. So this big female is Andy's matriarch, Willow. And uh, the funny part is about her having a name is that Willow was purchased through me from a very close friend of mine who had her as a pet. And Andy was very much into bull snakes and she was, my, my friend was kind of downsizing a little bit um, and sold Willow to Andy. Willow was originally produced and uh, bought from Reptilia in Vaughan, Ontario as just a white sided. My friend believes that maybe she might have been had something, but we never told Andy and I never knew. My friend never told me because she forgot about it because she's uh, a hobbyist and wasn't worried about breeding bull snakes at all in her life. Um, and you can see how large Willow is. Uh, she is his matriarch. Um, anyway, so while well, he bred her the first time, bred her, made normal things, bred her son back to her and lo and behold, she turns out to be head hypo and head albino or sorry i believe she's actually hypo white sided so she's visual hypo but nobody really knew noticed hard to tell on white sides um but head albino so she proved out his first clutch he proved it was like oh my god aaron this thing popped out albino babies and we're pretty floored we had to track it back and talk to my friend and say yeah it might have been paused at this and we're like wow the fact that you held back a male that proved out with the pos pos head like it's kind of crazy odds to get it um you can see how large a, a very nice sized uh bull snake is you can see how large your head is um a monster eater bull snakes don't eat everything so mice rats they'll even eat chicks quails um great for variety they're, they're just monster eaters um garbage cans really unfortunately as of making this video releasing this video as i write this audio uh willa has passed away but uh um, she lived a very long life and produced many babies for Andy and uh, it's sad but things happen um, but she lived a very long life and she was a great snake. So anyway, I do, I am sorry once again for the video not having original audio. Um, 
kind of sucks, but uh, here we are. We made the best of it, and I didn't didn't want to have to go back and film everything because I really like the footage and I really want to show Andy's collection off. Um, the footage is quite old now, but uh, he's about four hour drive for me, and it was just hard to get out, arrange everything. But it was a great time. Um, really, really appreciate him showing everything off to everyone. And once again, um, thanks for watching, and hope you stay tuned for the next one.